Hello, I've come to Beaconsfield in England to the former home of G.K. Chesterton. Chesterton and his wife Frances lived at this address, Top Meadow, from 1922 until his death in 1936 and her death in 1938. I've come to speak to the owners of this house because the house that the Chestertons lived in initially in Beaconsfield is just across the way, over roads, and is currently under threat of demolition. So, Ken, you are living in the former home of G.K. Chesterton. Yeah, we're the uh, owner-occupier, and uh, we've lived here for approximately 25 years. And thoroughly enjoy it. What's it like living in something which so many people around the world know of, think about, have written about? When we first bought this house, we knew about Chesterton, but uh, we didn't know as much as we know now. And over the years, we've had so many visitors from all over the globe. Really? Which, uh, which, which countries? Uh, oh, they've been from Italy, America, uh, some from the Far East, uh, Scandinavia, I mean, you name it. And from busloads of people coming, particularly from America, because it's, he's so popular there, we've had people arrive in tears on the doorsteps because they're so emotional about uh, seeing the house that he lived in. Now, I'm right in thinking, Ken, aren't I, that um, Chesterton and his wife Frances lived initially in Overroads, which is just across the way here. Yes, they, they lived there originally. They, in uh, 1909, uh, they came on a visit from London and were very impressed with Beaconsfield and uh, loved the setting of, of here uh, and in particular of uh, Overroads and decided to, to move in and move out of London which was a big move for them. And uh, they lived there from 1909 till 1922. Uh, so 13 years, only a year less than they lived here. And in fact, this house wouldn't exist if it weren't for that house. Tell me why. Because Chesterton enjoyed the setting here so much, enjoyed Beaconsfield, and he enjoyed the house, the style of the house, and the, arch the particular ar architecture. So when the opportunity came to build here because he needed more space. He wanted to build something in the same character, using the same architects, uh, so there would therefore be a pair, uh, very similar houses, which would define the entrance to Grove Road and the character of the houses. So what you're saying is there is a sort of unbreakable link between Top Meadow and Overroads, both historically but also the design of the houses? Both historically and the design of the houses. I think they're intrinsically linked, yes. Now, that's the good news, but I've heard rumours that things aren't so good in Beaconsfield today. <laughs> well, things are very good in Beaconsfield, but the, the, the issue is more and more people want to live here. And that's the developer's dream. And at the moment, there's a threat on overroads because a developer has uh, applied to pull it down, demolish it completely, gone forever, to build a block of unsightly flats. Wait a minute, Ken, are you saying they're going to knock this beautiful house down and put up some sort of makeshift uh, block of flats that could be anywhere in the world. Um, how can this be happening in England today? I have no idea because this is a, a residential area of exceptional character uh, and you can see why because of the definition of the type of properties. Uh, this is a beautiful property. Uh, the new property being proposed does not fit the characteristics of an RAEC. A residential area of exceptional quality, RAEC. So, I think the real, the real issue is, even if this is refused, uh, and hopefully we'll get the decision in the next few days, another developer, or even the same developer with another plan, will probably come again because it's a prime site within walking distance of the new town, the old town, uh, and it's a lovely location. So I think the only way we can protect such a beautiful building and a building with such historic interest is to have it listed in exactly the same way as uh, Top Meadow is listed. So how does that work, Ken? This building is listed. What, yes. what, does, what are the restrictions then in terms of Top Meadow? This is Grade 2 listed, so again we have to apply uh, for uh, historic buildings approval for any changes we make to the property. And they've all got to be in keeping with the building. And nobody can knock it down? No one can knock it down, no. So you would like the same protection for overroads for the exactly same reasons. It's historic and cultural uh, links and importance. That's exactly right. For all of those reasons, I think it's imperative. So how can people help you and uh, 
the memory of Chesterton in this current situation? I think by continuing to register the fact that uh, the importance of Chesterton uh, is to more than an individual, it's, it's of global interest and uh, to raise as much public interest as possible. Uh, from our point of view, we've actually applied to, to have the building listed across the road and that will go through a process, assuming the planning, uh, uh, planning application isn't passed, uh, then we will have a, a process where they will come and they will investigate uh, the whole of this area for uh, overroads and hopefully it will be listed. If not, we're hoping it will become a designated local asset, which again would offer it some protection. Well, you certainly have our support and we hope that that will be the case. Um, Ken, thank you very much for taking the time to speak to us about this and also allowing us to film your beautiful home. Oh, it's an absolute pleasure. Anything we can do to help prevent uh, that building disappearing? Amen to that.